the doctors is all new. We're bringing you all the greatest breast breakthroughs. Is your bra to blame for your aches and pains? It affects your neck, your back. Women get headaches. Now there's a new high-tech solution to help design the perfect fitting bra. I can tell a complete difference. A new five-minute exam that can help detect cancer years before a mammogram. We're going to give you the results. Plus, the do's and the don'ts of breastfeeding. Would you let your daughter play with this controversial doll? You're going to have a breastfeeding doll? It's a little inappropriate and creepy to me. And does the shape of your bust line... Pineapple's supposed to be romantic. ...shape your personality? How is this romantic? <laughs> Today on The Doctors, where MD meets TV. so real. It's the body part both men and women are obsessed with, although for different reasons. We're bringing you all the latest and greatest breast breakthroughs that you need to know. Yeah. Yes. yes. Even the men right out here. there. Yeah. It's going to be a From good show. From the groundbreaking technology being used to create the bra of the future, which you can see over there. We're going to get to that a little later. We're also going to be talking about the biggest breastfeeding mistakes that new moms make. Today's show is all about the breasts. So put down whatever you're doing. Today's show right, could awesome. change, but more importantly, even save your life. And as you can see, we have a special guest co-host today. Please welcome back board certified breast specialist, Dr. Christy Funk. Yay! Yay. Good to be back. We get excited when you come on the show because... Because I'm all about breasts. No, because number one, we yeah. love having you on for your personality, but also we noticed you look a little different. I am a little minus my three baby boys were born seven weeks ago. Wow. If you remember, the last time she was on the show, she was she was very pregnant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She yeah. Wow. She does. Oh, yeah. Really? And it, it was so cool yeah. last week. I was working in the hospital as well, doing a reconstructive case, and I walked in into her operating room, Came and Christy the was there with a big smile on her face under the mask, <laughs> doing what she does best. I know, and she's just been fabulous. I mean, with my one baby, I was like three times the size of you with your three babies. So, I mean, it really goes to say, you know, that if you don't gain a lot of weight, you can really have a nice, healthy pregnancy and bounce back quickly, because this is fantastic. Yeah. I think the yeah. key is to be fit before you get pregnant. Right. It made it a lot yeah, easier. Definitely. I remember breastfeeding my son, and he is 18 now. And it goes by so, so very, very quickly. Just as long and as he's not still breastfeeding. He's not still yeah, right. breastfeeding. Yeah. We ain't keep okay. going, no. No, yeah. he actually I, told me when to stop. I remember my kids oh. went to college. I went, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> that's the difference, men, women, mommy. mommy. And that's oh, why yeah. we have Christy yes. here today, because we're going to be talking about not only being a mom, but controversies. You may have read about this in the news lately. It's a new product out of Spain, and it has everyone up in arms. Right now, the days of Cabbage Patch Kid dolls seem to be over. A new doll being marketed teaches your child, though, how to breastfeed. A Spanish toy maker has developed Bebe Gloton, which means gluttonous baby. The doll comes with a special halter top that the child wears as they pretend to breastfeed their babies. The baby even cries to signal she needs more milk. Critics say the idea may promote early pregnancy. Wow. You know, I have a problem with this. I know some of you guys may or may not, but I think, you know, there's some things that I, I think they can, the mom can show the breastfeeding and show the bonding, but I think the little girls don't need to have the baby right on their breast. They can do that with other dolls and things like that, but putting it on their breast and the way those nipple things kind of wilt and die after they, I don't think it's a positive reinforcement. Well, I, think it's, I think it's fine, because I've seen kids all the time, when they play with their dolls, especially if those kids were breastfed themselves, they tend to just do what they, you know, mimic what their moms were doing, and I don't think it's a problem. And it kind of, I think it sends a message to the kids that the the breasts aren't necessarily just a sexual organ. I think it's a healthy thing. Well, this for the kids is such a Euro deal. I mean, everything in Europe, the attitudes are a little different. I mean, you were just there this summer. 
mm-hmm. in southern France, yeah, right? And France, everybody just everyone was come out. Yeah, right. I mean, I think, I think we have to get yeah, over to some of our. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, looking at the breast as a sexual organ as well as an organ that feeds babies. I mean, I think it's everybody's preference. Like, I didn't want to have my breast out when I was breastfeeding, but mm-hmm. maybe I don't know. I think know we about can lighten up a little bit and be a little more less conservative about this, but I don't think this doll is going to catch on. As long as we just get a positive attitude about breastfeeding sure. and, you know, don't and make sure that there's places for women to breastfeed mm-hmm. and, and all that type of thing, but I don't know that but you necessarily Christy, need to The last doll. point in that video was encourages early pregnancy. Yeah. Now, we've seen dolls that are strip dancers. We've seen dolls that I think are outrageous. Is this harmful? I don't think it I is. Do, I I, do you think this is going to encourage early pregnancy? I thought that was I don't think early so. sex. Well, I think the whole thing about the Barbie and Ken creepy. doll maybe wait, encouraged wait, wait, wait. that a little more. A, a controversy with a, with a doll, with a doll that was pregnant that they had out. And I think that's educational, more educational, mm-hmm. teaching them about pregnancy and mommies and things like that. That doll was actually taken yeah. off the market. So you can really? have a pregnancy a doll shame. taken off. That's a shame. But you're going to have a breastfeeding doll? Because yeah, it teaches the, the consequences of unprotected sex. Absolutely. Christy? <laughs> well, I think we spend the majority of our lives with our breasts more as a sexual organ and body self-image rather than breastfeeding. So although I think it's educational for children to know, yeah, breastfeeding is a well, natural thing, it's a little inappropriate and creepy to me. But yeah. it is rem- it's important to remember that the breast, just like you said, really is threefold. I mean, it is a sexual organ. Keeps it you is- in business. Well, that too. <laughs> self-image. And, and self-image, that's where I come in to play, Very breastfeeding. Very for women's self-image. And it is a sexual organ. You can't get around that. And the next point we want to bring up here is also somewhat controversial. There's an Italian sex researcher. His name is Piero Lorenzoni. He says that a woman's breasts, the type of breasts that she has, denote her character. And he bases us on fruit, a melon. Tell us, Drew, what a woman who has well, melon breasts, according to this researcher. I think our friend in Italy needs a little help. I yeah. mean, Leave Freud could Italian, have a heyday man. with him. Okay, but, I think Lorenzi, you know, or whatever his name is, is a boob himself, because that's <laughs> just ridiculous. That is so ridiculous. Well, we all have a fruit in front of us. There's cherry-like breasts, right? The lemons. Well, like they, they come in all shapes and sizes, and, well, and no, you know, I think the point. going to dictate a woman's personality. I mean, that's well, we ridiculous. Well, and I agree 100. percent But let's them. at least go through his yes, theories because well, they are intriguing. Well, you know, speaking as a ridiculous. man, I don't want to limit myself to one fruit. I'd prefer a fruit salad. <laughs> well, you know, oh, fruit, fruit is good, good. right, Drew? <laughs> a different fruit, you can. That's where I come in. You know what so what I do they say about a lemon uh, melon, a melon personality? Well, it's supposed to be more maternal, caring, but not, not necessarily as sensual and erotic. So he says. Huh. Pineapple's supposed to be romantic, but what I don't like, and I'm going to go here because this is like labeling women. So many ways to try and you know, label I, women. And I I've got to speak up How is this romantic? Well, <laughs> I'm just saying. <laughs> Call it a spade a spade. That Maybe might be a good one. I haven't seen instead. too many breasts that right. look quite like Let's that. Not try well, to what about the lemon? The, what they right. say about the lemon's personality is this is for men who want someone a bit more lively. They should choose a woman with lemon breasts, pert and prominent. These women are full of life and can laugh at themselves. They want a balanced life without surprises. I want something I, as sweet as cherries. There you go. Well, well you're not going to find it in an orange. No. Because no. an orange uh, does not turn up the heat between the sheets. She likes conversation and partnership. So no salad for you Okay. with an orange. But again, this is a silly study. Oh, it is. Well, it all oh, comes from a cherry. Within. According to this sex researcher, they're funny and very exciting, entertaining and intelligent. They make great partners for everyday life. There you go. We don't have it up here. It's a pear. He says that women who have pear-shaped breasts, they love love in all its variations. They're very religious, but they're known to have affairs. Hmm. Oh, my God. Where does this pears. come from? Okay. Then, then, yeah, no, then. Pear-shaped but breasts. Wait, then no, then men are usually pear-shaped. No. <laughs> the bodies in general. So the last thing, this is something a little more serious. It's the breast light screening device. It's a new handheld device. This is this extra dimension, so, so-called, in terms of breast self-examination, right? Yeah, anything that adds to... Um